Finally, British Columbia boasts some of the world's richest and largest natural gas reserves. This gives us a unique opportunity to displace coal, coal power and other dirtier forms of fossil fuels around the world. A new LNG industry has included First Nations from the ground floor through a bottom-up process of consultation. LNG will be an unprecedented opportunity for First Nation communities across British Columbia, helping lift families out of poverty and strengthening their ability to shape the future of their choosing. The first Indigenous cabinet minister elected to this place who carries a government per portfolio is responsible for shepherding the future of this industry. After 146 years since this legislature was founded, this is, a, this is long overdue. He will carry the voice of Indigenous peoples who demand to be a full partner in economic opportunity into this place. Whether it is LNG, mining, forestry, agriculture, aquaculture, renewable power, tourism, or other industries where partnerships are being formed. And as a result, First Nations here in British Columbia are enjoying more benefits than ever before. Over 400 economic and reconciliation agreements have been signed since 2013. And we all still have so much potential to realize together. Members, just this past Monday, Indigenous leaders and mentors from across Canada, including British Columbia, were recognized with national honours at Rideau Hall in Ottawa, and I was delighted to be witness to that special ceremony. Yesterday was National Aboriginal Day, a day that Canadians recognize and celebrate the outstanding contributions of Indigenous people. It is a reminder of the hard and essential work of reconciliation that your government is committed to, nation to nation. There is still much work ahead, and we must travel this journey together. British Columbians have been gifted with vast clean energy opportunities, including hydro, wind, and solar. We have an enviable system of hydropower built by generations before us, who had the vision to plan not just for their needs, but for our future, Without them, we would be burning fossil fuels to generate our electricity today. And now, we are called on as a generation to tackle climate change by shaping a low-carbon future. We must build on a previous generation's vision by electrifying our economy with clean hydropower to realize this goal. 61% of BC's greenhouse gas emissions come from Metro Vancouver, a third of which comes from transportation. Your government is committed to an ambitious, ambitious emissions-free target for all new non-commercial vehicles registered in Metro Vancouver by 2035, advancing the previous goal of 2050 by 15 years. This is an ambitious target, and BC Hydro's supply of clean power cannot meet this capacity today. That is why this historic transition requires plentiful, reliable, and affordable clean electricity born in British Columbia. More sources of renewable energy like wind, solar, and geothermal will help, but they will not be enough. Site C gives us the opportunity for an abundance of clean energy, allowing us to meet our obligation to transition our economy from carbon to fight climate change. With the confidence of this House, your government will invest an additional $50 million over the next five years to fund a significant expansion of vehicle charging infrastructure throughout the province, making British Columbia number one in Canada. Further, your government will also direct BC Hydro to immediately begin consultations with private sector clean energy producers, First Nations, and communities to support community power opportunities, including wind, solar, and geothermal. Your government will also work with the governments of Alberta and Canada for a strengthened clean electricity itinerary between British Columbia and Alberta 
to displace thermal coal with clean hydropower across the Rocky Mountains. British Columbia is a leader in the fight against climate change. Despite opposition at the time, we were the first jurisdiction in North America to put a price on carbon. Our carbon tax framework has been recognized by global institutions as one of the best in the world. Canada has, a, has been clear in its desire to see all provinces implement a $50 per tonne carbon tax by 2022, outlined in the Pan-Canadian Framework on Clean Growth and Climate Change. Your government will meet this goal by raising the carbon tax by $5 per tonne per year starting in 2019, up to a total of $50 per tonne by 2022. A made in BC approach will stand firm on the principle of revenue neutrality. For all future carbon tax increases, the provincial sales tax will be reduced by a corresponding amount. Your government will take the advice of the climate leadership team to protect workers and businesses in energy intensive trade exposed industries by ensuring new costs from the carbon tax are offset by other taxes. So companies with strong ties to BC have good reasons to innovate and reduce their emissions. Your government will also increase forest salvage and move toward the goal of banning slash burning, ensuring this creates new economic opportunities in our forest towns without hurting workers. Your government has heard the call for more frontline resources to protect our environment and wildlife and will increase funding to hire more conservation officers across BC and implement a wildlife management plan that ensures sustainable populations and protects our biodiversity. In addition, your government will move to protect the health and safety of BC's unique environment by reviewing our system of professional reliance to ensure public confidence is maintained. Your government will also ensure that direct payments it secured from the federally regulated Trans Mountain Pipeline Expansion Project are dedicated to environmental protection and restoration. Visiting our provincial parks is a quintessential affordable BC family vacation. British Columbia has assembled the third largest park system in North America. These are places for us to celebrate, places for families to reconnect, and places for the world to discover. Your government created and funded a bold BC Parks future vision. With the confidence of this house, your government will add $50 million over five years to BC Parks budget. This will create more campsites, raise the standard of our park facilities, and create a youth rangers program that will add staff in our parks between May and September. We are blessed to have such magnificent places to preserve and share that unite all British Columbians wherever they live. 